Pasqua, happy Easter. So today we are making pizza gana, which is our traditional Italian dish. <laughs> and this is actually one of John's family specialties, so we can't really show you the recipe, but we'll show you a little bit of our baking. So this is going to be a really chopped up version because if I ever gave out the recipe, uh, you know, essentially I would die. So. <laughs> It'll be a hit out on your life. <laughs> so, we'll show uh, bits and pieces here, but this is the holiday Easter pizza gana. Passed down from my mother's mother to my mother, and now to me. And me. <laughs> and Cheryl, of course. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, my family was Italian. This is more of a southern Italian and like Sicilian type dish, but also Greek. Greeks also use this for a Greek Easter. Um, you have to start with really clean hands and clean cooking surfaces and be willing to work with dough. It's just, what is it, honey? Tell them what's in it. It's a mixture of um, uh, regatta and uh, cheeses and uh, uh, meats, cold cuts. What are you doing? I'm still breaking some eggs. Breaking some eggs? You need a whole lot of eggs for pizza gana. A whole carton of eggs, 12 eggs. In a nice big bowl, and especially, what's important to do in between everything? You have to wash, wash your, your hands. hands like 50 million times. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> Uh, you're not supposed to be vlogging the ingredients, dear. Well, eggs you can give away, the eggs. Pizza Gata is normally done by dumping all the ingredients in in the pie. John's mother and her family does not do that. We have had people, plus they use different ingredients than most people do. So we've had people actually like want to give us money for this recipe, <laughs> but we can't, we can't share it. We've We'd be cut out of the well, you know. By the way, to um, do this neatly without any spillage or, or mess. Oh yeah, your kitchen's gonna be a ripper and mess. So just make sure you have plenty of the Clorox kitchen wipe with you, and, <laughs> and be prepared to vacuum and or mop after, before and after. That is a whole lot of gotta. So also, if you're making pizza game, huh? or using something with regatta cheese and it's for a holiday. Dragoni is really great. That's the only one your mom would use. Uh, yeah, anything else and uh, and you're not a true um, uh, chef du jour. A chef du jour, you're not a true. Italian. So when I first came into the family, I had to learn to make this to pass the test. You have to um, be able to make pizza gata to be an Italian wife in this house, so. <laughs> have to uh, adjust the ingredients as you go along because yeah. depending on the, on the uh, thickness, mm -hmm. on the consistency of the batter, yeah. you have to play with it a little bit. Right. Here, it turns out this one needed 13 eggs. 13 eggs. <laughs> I, I wasted one in the sink by accident, yeah. so I got, <laughs> got 11 and I added two more. It's also important to know, right, there's no measurement in this recipe. No. It's Italian, it's Sicilian, you go by how you taste. Also, um, you have to use fresh cheese. Do not use that box cheese. You need to get the good, fresh, grated Parmesan cheese. Now, look at this, look at this mixture. This is a good mixture. See, this is about the thickness you want it. And that's just cheese and eggs? This is just regatta and egg. Regatta and egg. <laughs> A couple things. And a couple you know, other special couple stuff. Other readings, but special in the Dolly family like flavorings, but that's okay. John cooks in hospital scrubs, well obviously clean hospital scrubs, because he doesn't care if he makes a mess of them. I use an apron we got for our wedding. And our ape our wedding <laughs> You didn't hear that. <laughs> what did you do? I'm not allowed to show you what he's putting in here. He just screwed up. Oh, your mom's gonna be mad at you. Our wedding, this apron is for both of us. It's used to cook in the kitchen, and at our bridal shower, people signed uh, messages for us all over it. So that's our special kitchen. Let me see the consistency now. Beautiful. It's perfect. It's perfect. 
And now you have to add the cheese to your cheese and egg. <laughs> uh, my pants are falling down, hang on. Well. <laughs> get your old clothes. In case you guys were wondering, this right here, I know it looks very strange. This is Gabrielle's growth chart. We've been painting over the kitchen to paint over the old wood paneling, get the house ready to stay up. Because this is a really old house. It had like this old vintage wood paneling. But I couldn't bring myself to paint over Gabrielle's growth chart. So I'll be leaving it there until we move. And then I'll have to take pictures of it and frame it. Or see if one of my friends who's really handy can pop it out of the wall so I can put it in a frame and mat it. Okay, what are you putting in this now? Is, this is a little fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Yay! That should be good. Oh, it smells really good. It smells delicious. So yes, Cheryl's so mixing the uh I'm asking it. Yes. No, you can't Oscar, have any. Oscar would like to have some. He cannot. <laughs> I'm I'm acting as the kitchen aid mixer since I think we already packed that away. <laughs> That's looking pretty good man. It smells really good. It's looking good. Alright, I'm going to uh, chop up the cold cuts. Cheryl will show you that. So, so, this. so this is mortadella. And yep. it's, that's about the thickness of each slice, which is perfect. Like bologna. Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like kind, a fancy type. Kind of bologna. like bologna. I'm going to take about... Um, less salty. I don't know, maybe that much. How much is that? Like an eyeball? That's like a pound and a half. Um, I don't think it calls for that much. I think it calls for like uh, half a pound. <laughs> of what? Mortadella. That's a lot of mortadella. You're going to be eating that in sandwiches for like a week. And John likes to cut it in thirds. We got this great, this is a great cutting board. I got it from... Um, and it is so easy to clean. Thirds. Yay! Okay, that's right. mortadella. Mortadella. Now the cold that? cuts that you put in a pizza gana are entirely by taste. You can put whatever cold cuts you want. I personally prefer uh, ham. ham. And, I, and I like honey ham. Right, you like it to be sweet. So it's and kind salty. of I like a little sweet and salty mix exactly yeah. right. And I'll use about maybe that much ham should do it. Okay. The ham is gonna have to be in order, I think. Okay. Like this, like this, like that. All right. Okay? Pretty cool. So, also in thirds. I dropped a piece of ham. Oh no, Oscar! Oh no! Bust, right there, bud. Yeah, Oscar loves pizza gator season as well. It's okay for him to have meat today because he, he's not of any religious denomination. We can't we have, can't meat. have it's meat. It's Good Friday today, and that's right, we can't even taste this until tomorrow to see how it tastes. We're gonna have to like enlist the help of one of our neighbors who does not participate in Good Friday to see if it actually tastes okay. But we, we just know we've done this for so long, and we actually, we eat fish. Being Italian Catholics, we eat fish here in Boston on Good Friday. I don't know how you all celebrate it, um, it's a solemn day here in Boston. It's supposed to be a quiet day. And actually, our neighborhood is really quiet. So, hopefully, we were just saying to ourselves, right, honey, that this is going to be the last time we cook really in this kitchen. And it's kind of sad because this kitchen, basically, um, when we were here and first married, not much things in it worked. It was very old. So, it's not a dream kitchen. Um, but it's been a kitchen that's had a lot of happy memories in like every appliance in here is like a month's worth of work for us so it's like so it's just a happy place for us so we're hoping our next kitchen is the same sort of feeling I'm looking forward to like designing a new kitchen and, and our big thing right is what is it that you keep saying you want in the kitchen for cooking since we cook together being an Italian family we 
do the cooking so it's not just mom cooking in the kitchen, right, John? Right. It's like Italian men, a real Italian man, loves his cooking, so we divvy up our dishes. Am I a real Italian, honey? Yeah, well, you're also Polish, but that's okay, too. <laughs> John was raised Italian, but also is Polish. And I'm like just everything under the sun, but mostly Italian and Scottish. But so your first step, John, would you like to tell them? You have to kind of go by eye. John doesn't really measure it out, so he just puts a, a how thick is the layer of the ricotta cheese and egg? Mixture? Not very. Not not very. Not Cause very. Because I'm gonna I plan to do about uh, three, maybe four layers total. Three. So you have to try to make sure you have enough to complete okay. to complete the pie, and then yeah, and then to um, you don't want to you have you have a limited space here with depth and right surface area. It's so. very important. We forgot to say you have to use like a really deep. What, what works best for this is a large lasagna pan, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we found. A non-stick large lasagna pan. Um, in a pinch, we've used. You put this over there, honey. The on tin top foil. Of, on top of yep. that. Oh, hold on, I gotta now, do my checks. Well, now comes the part where you layer. I like to layer. All right. So the, what do you now, put first? There's, there's, the there's several ways of doing this. You do ham first. When when you do a pizza gana, uh huh. You can do. Many people will. Uh, into the regatta mix, they'll just take, they, they chop up, bit, yeah. chop up the meat, mix it all together, it. dump it in, and do this. But that's what very we messy. like to do is do layers. Right, layers like a penny for like a cake. So the first step you do is you layer your ham first, or it can be whatever you want. Just don't do whatever cheese first. Do a meat first over your regatta and egg and cheese mixture. So John is layering the ham. So now, just to give you an idea, John has all the cheese layered over his ham. Now he's layering the mortadella. Now, you don't need to use mortadella, right? No, and as a matter of fact, that's just some would say this makes it a little bit salty. Salty, so but, if you don't like okay. saltier food or you have someone who's on a restricted cardiac diet or has blood pressure or diabetes, I would omit the mortadella. But just be aware, it, the dish will be a little bit less salty. And understand also, in general, this is not a low calorie dish. No, you can make it low calorie though, depending on what you buy. But the, we found when we make it low calorie with low calorie regatta and low calorie cheese and cold cuts, it, it kind of loses some of the consistency. So John's family likes it to the traditional way. So once you layer your mortadella, or another layer of ham. You could do another layer of ham or whatever you want. Any, it, it is definitely, or you could use, I've used honey baked ham before with John's mom and it came out really good when she was still living with us. And then what you do is you put another thin layer of Parmesan and regatta. Okay, so Cheryl's trying her hand at uh, layering some meats and cheeses here. I'm still somewhat new to uh, the pizza gata making business. <laughs> but I do love to bake. Baking is more my thing than it is cooking, so this is to me. This is, baking. this is baking. baking. Oscar. Oscar is unhappy with me because I will not let him help or eat any ham. <laughs> but um, this will make. No, I think this would make my grandpa proud. It would make your grandma proud. Mm -hmm. There we go. And the beautiful ham and cheese layer is done. Mortadella. Now she's doing the mortadella. Mortadella. I gotta say this, when we move, I'm going to miss being in Boston simply because in Boston, we have what's called the North End with a lot of great Italian restaurants and Italian markets. So when you go to get cold cuts, they are authentic cold cuts. I'm gonna miss it. I have to find a good Italian market on the North Shore somewhere. And? Another layer of regatta and egg. Right? Yep. Good. Looking very good. Yep. And we 
remember, we warned you, it makes a mess in your kitchen. So whenever you make this, leave plenty of room to clean it, which is okay. You'll have plenty of time because it takes three and a half hours to bake this. I'm just going <laughs> to shut the camera up because I have to add more. We're going to mix. <laughs> also, also, I forgot to tell you, extra virgin olive oil is essential to use for this dish for brushing the pan. Or as, or as pan. Rachel Ray EVOO. Okay, so we finally finished layering our meat and cheese. We only added one more layer of the cut up meats and regatta egg and cheese mixture. And now it's time to take our rolled out top layer. So you take the top layer of dough that you've already rolled out. And we're going to have to re roll it. And we have to re roll it, <laughs> which is common. And if you don't bake often, no, working with dough is tricky. It tears, it, especially the thinner you roll it. So we have to re-roll it out, and that's not a big deal. We're gonna work on it. Get it going. We, if you see, we put duct tape on the table after we cleaned and wiped it all down because you don't, I don't want the flour getting into the cracks of our table. This table can pull out to be a lot bigger than what it is. So you rework the dough, and we have to roll it out, and then we'll be ready to cover up our pie in the oven. So now John is carefully covering up the pie with our reworked out dough. Okay. You don't have to be super careful, folks, no. with the I just don't like to get a big glom of uh, dough. No, because then the, they burn. The edges burn if you have too much dough on the sides. You want them to be tucked down into your pan. Next, with clean hands, Sprinkle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and lightly brush it over. You can use a brush too, but John likes to use just clean, clean dry. So also, you want to heat your oven in the meantime while you're doing your final preparation to 325 degrees. You're going to put this in on a low heat, so 325 degrees for three hours, and then raise your oven to 375 degrees after three hours and cook it for a half an hour more. Now you want to make sure that you are, you know, you can tell when it's done the dough is rising, it's brown, and you want to use a food thermometer to check for doneness on the inside. So John is poking three holes, three, we do three to four holes just with a kitchen knife down the center to allow the dough to rise and allow like extra air to escape while it's cooking. And now this is ready to go in the oven. And I'm ready to clean up this end, colossal mess. <laughs> at the end, by the way, yes. there's, a, there's a, oh man, this is heavy. It's very there's heavy. A, there's a, um, there's quite a rigmarole at the end where you have to invert it yeah, and invert it that's back. A You'll see that. Process. You'll see that. So now it's ready to go into our Easter oven. And it's all set. This is preheated. Preheated, you Sweet. can put it in the bottom. Bang, and done. There you go. And then we set our timer for three hours. Okay, there you go. Our oven is at 3.25, and it is, if you check the time, it's time for three hours. At the end of three hours, what you're going to do is you are going to increase the temperature of your oven to 375 and cook for half an hour more and then check the temp and feel of it. Now it is time for me to do what I do best, which is clean up this big kitchen mess. So we'll see you guys in three hours and show you the finished product. So right? in the meantime, we've been watching what movie? Uh, Top Gun. Top Gun. Top Gun. Top Gun. One of John's personal 1980s favorites. And we've been reading over all of your questions for our upcoming Q&A video. And we think it's going to be really, really good. So we're going to film that for you soon. You guys have given so, us a ton of This is a newer oven for us. So that's why I said you got to keep a close eye on this. Cooking times will vary. So it's actually only been three hours. So we let ish. it cook. Three hours ish. We kept looking at it and looked at how it was browning. So we only cooked it at 325 for two and a half hours and then raised it to 375 for the half hour. So we've only cooked it for three hours, but we're going to check its temperature and check it for doneness. This is what it looks like. It's risen nicely. It's a nice golden brown. It should be firm to touch when you touch it. We're going to hit cancel here. So we're going to take the digital food thermometer and put it in the middle. And you have to 
turn it on for us. This is my husband. So I don't know if you can see it, but the middle of it should be, you should test, test the middle of it. It should be at least 160 degrees. You're working with eggs. So there you go, 165, 166. We have lost, we have lost many a pizza gainas to the part where you take it out of the pan. My mom so, dropped the yep, pizza gaina one year. Dropped the pizza gaina on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and we found her crying, sitting on the floor, crying in the kitchen. She's like, isn't that how you learned to make it? Because she was so upset you went out and you helped her make it all over again from scratch. That's when you learned, so. Leave it alone. See, my husband, ladies, I don't know if your husband's like this. Do all of your husbands, when you cook, like keep going in and touching I the things? I cooked it. John has a thing about letting things cool all the way. They need to cool before you touch them. He has scalded his mouth on brownies. We have had him burn his tongue to the point he's almost had to go to the ER on, what was it, cake? Chocolate cake? Mm. Yeah. It's gonna cool for 45 minutes. So it's all cooled and it's sunken down a little bit. That's okay. It means it's cool enough. What we do is we put a cookie sheet or another cookie underneath it that fits over it to flip it over. You make sure you use pot holders. So now we've flipped it over to remove it from the pan and it should just slide right out of the pan. Make sure the pan is cool enough to touch. Now, so you have it there on one pan. And then what we do is we put another cookie sheet underneath it and flip it back right side up. And I let that cool for another half hour. So, here's our other cookie sheet. <laughs> put the other cookie sheet over it. And, and, all right, can I see? And ta-da! And be careful at this point because yes, you will get a little oil in your kitchen. A little oil will spill. But there you go. So there's our pizza gaina all ready to be cooled off. You don't want to play with it or move it around too much because it still hasn't gelled on the inside. It's still really hot. So you want to leave it out for at least another half hour 45 minutes until it's a little firmer and then you can put it in the refrigerator and cover it with cheesecloth to store and then you want to put it once it's totally cool now that it's out of the pan you want to wait another 45 minutes half hour 45 minutes and then i wrap this whole thing with the cookie sheet in cheesecloth and I put it downstairs and we have a separate refrigerator for like parties and functions. And I let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. I also, after I wrap it in cheesecloth, put um, tin foil around it to keep, to keep it fresh and sealed. Happy Easter. Buona Pasqua. May you guys have a great holiday celebration with your families.